Hi, this is Karen Walby Solomon, and welcome to my podcast, Crushing On. Welcome to episode seven. Thank you, everyone, who has shown us support over the last two months. It has been a crazy ride, one of the best rides of my life, but definitely crazy with the amount of support that we've gotten. So, to those of you who have rated and reviewed on Apple Podcasts, it has helped us to rise in the charts all around the world. It has also helped other people to find us. And for those who have subscribed on any network, those who have commented who have engaged with us in social media we see it and we appreciate you today on the show we have leandra engelbecht who is the movie and tv editor of channel 24 she's a wizard with words she has a host of knowledge about the film and television industry she's seen almost everything and she's just such an interesting person to talk to so we spoke about many things like right now she's really into k-dramas and she spoke a little bit about that and she spoke about what South African telenovelas she's watching and she keeps up to date with we spoke a bit about reality tv what she watched as a kid who we think will be nominated for emmys this year what the state of the movie industry in 2020 and we also had a very frank and maybe sometimes shady discussion about The Bachelor and The Bachelorette because we're both fans of the show and sort of our review of season two of The Bachelor. And after the chat with Leandro, we added a little bit of a throwback to last week's episode, just a snippet of my interview with Quinisa Van Dam, The Bachelorette, because we spoke about The Bachelor in such detail in this episode, we thought we would just give you just a little pebble over there so that if you didn't listen to the episode it will give you more context and if you did just a little reminder especially if you were a guy who was thinking hmm she sounds pretty cool maybe I should enter the bachelorette well this is the sign you're waiting for from the gods telling you you should enter you should go for it you should try it you should go for your dreams if your dream is to be the life partner of the amazing bachelorette you should go for it and this is me karen walby solomon telling you that yes i believe in you i believe you can do it but i don't want to waste your time because i know how much you hate rambling someone actually called this part of the show karen's stream of conscious which that sounds so poetic when it's just me rambling about nonsense and like so also for those of you who know me can you imagine me moving my hands? Because that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm talking with my hands, but like looking at my wall, that's kind of my vibe right now. And also I realize I say vibe a lot. So I'm going to need you all to, to overlook that because added to the list of annoying things, I now realize I do. Firstly, the laugh. I say like way too much. And thirdly, what is this vibe thing? Why do I keep saying it? Anyway, I'm going to stop talking nonsense and get to the interview with Leandra. So what have you been watching? So, like I see you've been watching a lot of like K-dramas and whatnot. Yeah, so I recently finished now Fight for My Way. Mm. <laughs> K-drama. It's like my new obsession. I just got into it one day. I actually started with Crash Landing on You and I love the show so much that I've now just been watching all the things that's like the highly rated thing. So I've watched finished yesterday fight for my way it's like a 16 episode thing that I finished in a day because I clearly <laughs> had nothing to do yesterday <laughs> but it's nice such a, or so 16 episodes oh it's a good number yeah yeah it's not bad usually I stop at 10 but like with these k dramas, and I like how they and it's like an hour and a half episode so it's oh, wow. long mm. <laughs> so the fact that I'm watching such long episodes it's like <laughs> it's a big thing for me I just like the show so much because it's all just about these four four um, youths who have always been friends and it's just about them like chasing their dreams. So that was really cool. It was cool mm. to watch. And the soundtrack is cool. And I really have my favorite actors, Parks in June. My favorite okay. actor. So any show with him in, I watch it. <laughs> but it, yeah. sounds, it sounds cool. Yeah, it is. It's, it's so cool for me because I was actually thinking now I've been to so many different worlds now. Mm. I've been like, army in North Korea and I mean now it was taekwondo and um, this girl wants to be like a an announcer it's kind of like a broadcast journalist but mm. she's like an announcer so that's nice because I've been really dipping into different worlds 
different. It's different from the Western shows. Yeah. And I like that even like how they do the relationships. It's not like heavy focused on the one, two, bam, and all of that. It's like this whole gradual process of how they develop the relationship without it really being physical in the beginning. Mm. So I've been that. And it's also just an escape. Yeah, and it's also like understanding other cultures and stuff. Because we're so used to like the same American British. Yeah, yeah. So that's like I see like the moment that we can travel, I want to go to South Korea. (laughs) (laughs) That's goals now. (laughs) That's my dream. So, um, so with regards to like South African shows, what would you recommend with that? Like I'm trying to get into um, it, but I, it's just everything is always so long. Teleno, the telenovelas are like, I, are like there's a lot of the there's a lot of the telenovelas that I started watching that I stopped watching. Like the things that I watch like religiously now, it's Saint Worcester and mm-hmm. Arden's Flow. I like that Arden's Flow is only like three episodes in the week, and so I catch up on the Sunday when they have the omnibus, okay. and I like that it's only like twenty twenty eight minutes. So it's not like long and it's not dragged out. And the, the storytelling is actually on a nice pace where there's always things happening. Mm-hmm. But Arden's Fly, I think, is a really good thing to watch. But I've been watching it from the beginning. I was like, how are people watching like these five days a week soaps? And on top of everything else, I, w- I would be lost constantly. Like, I mean, I know back I know. in the day when we used to watch like Generations, it's fine if you miss like two episodes. But now, yeah. like, I think with the vibes, the way things are now... Like, but I also it's, think it's because we have a lot more options now. Mm. I feel like there's a lot more options. Like for me, five o'clock, I watch a telenovela on Telemundo. <laughs> <laughs> and then half past six, I watch St. Worcester. And then sometimes I still watch Scandal, depending if I want to see what's happening. Mm. That's like the set things that I'll watch every day. Wow, I sound like an old person. <laughs> but also like now you've visited so many worlds. Telemundo. <laughs> <laughs> I still love the television that I'm watching now. Yeah, I'm like if I could only get all these stamps in my passport, it would be cool. <laughs> yeah, I like a good Spanish telenovela. I can even look over the the dubbed mm. stuff. So yeah, I enjoy that. I and Rose, it's really good. It's all about revenge and this boss ass lady. So, and with like the reality shows and stuff, because I mean. Obviously, like most of the African, like the regional stuff is reality shows. What's your vibe? What do you feel more? The only reality show, South African reality show that I've watched right now is The Bachelor. Mm. Like, but I haven't been watching any of the Bunang stuff. I don't know. I just feel like my appetite for reality shows has stopped now. Yeah. Especially those, those celebrity focused ones. I just, I feel like we've seen it all. And, and like, it's also like, I think social media gives us such a like, a look into their lives already like we've seen on the Instagram stories I do think Bonang has that kind of because she's funny like she's yeah. funny on camera so she, she has she that. so she has so it's like it's kind of like comedic to watch but a lot of the others I'm like okay but I've seen this stuff also before exactly but that's just how I felt with Bonang's because I mean the stuff that was in her last season we saw all of yes. those things on social media already yeah, we saw we met award in exactly in, like we've seen I don't know it what, all in Europe already. or whatever. We saw, yeah. we saw all of that stuff. Yeah, it's like, but I suppose with like the Kardashians, mm-hmm. we know what's gonna happen, but there's like that extra drama inside the house that we we be tuning to watch. Yeah, so I think you know it needed more of that extra drama. Exactly in Bimbo Nang, like in season three, a lot of this stuff looked like. Like, you could see the seams. You know, mm-hmm. like, Pinky and Boiti were some of friends, but you could see that they, like, put them together for, like, the show. Do you know Aww. what I mean? Like, yes, yeah, maybe they know each see. other, but you could see, like, it seemed, like, yeah. awkward. They were trying to try and get some kind of action there. And I was like, is this real? Do you know what mm. I mean? But I think I think also when it comes to South African reality shows, it's because we've we've seen such a lot of international ones and how they do it. It kind of feels like South Africa's playing catching up now to it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like those things you mentioned now, like we've seen those things when the Kardashians started out now, but now it's so like, they're just so professional in how they tell the stories mm. now that you see those little mistakes. And I, feel, and I think that was the thing about me with South African reality shows. I just feel like, it's like playing catching up now. 
Yeah. And I think it's also <laughs> difficult because we have access to all the international ones. So where people have the option to tune in. But I mean, I suppose people yeah. watch South African ones because you want to see people that, you know, are like you. And you know, like Punang is, for example, is like crazy fans. Yeah. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy <laughs> fan. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to mess with the B force. They'll come for you. <laughs> Cosmo, you know, so they wrote this article about this white dressy woman, and then like the caption huh? on on Twitter or something was like, "It's a white dress, but it's not a wedding dress." That was like it. And they were like, this is so shady. And then they called out the social media manager by a full name. And she said, I didn't even write this. So oh this came word. from the fashion week. And then yeah, oh they were word. like, how dare you say not a wedding dress? <laughs> but I remember that dress, actually. Did it look like a wedding dress? <laughs> I do remember that dress. <laughs> but like, it's like they analyze the words. But it's mm. so crazy. But I like it though. I like that we that that is why that we have a crazy fandom in South Africa. We deserve yeah, one. Yeah. I feel like I feel like we're on par <laughs> with the internationals of the fandoms. I definitely feel like we're on par. Okay, yeah, let's talk about the bachelor. Hmm. So what do you think about them now deciding to do the bachelorette? I think it was a smart move because I I don't know if we got what we wanted from the past two seasons of The Bachelor. Yeah. So hopefully now, you know, we're um, going to get a bachelorette and hopefully the casting is also going to be a bit more diverse in the yeah. type of guys that they're going to choose for her. So that's going to be interesting to see how it's going to play out. And it's also going to be interesting to see how they're going to film it now with all of the restrictions that we still have. Mm. I was like, when is this going to happen? But they said they're going to yeah. start filming like late in the year. But The Bachelor, they only filmed towards the end of last in year. In October. Though. Yeah, yeah. October, so maybe, November. God willing, the COVID will <laughs> there'll be some I sort hope so. Because I really want to go to the reunion show. <laughs> yeah. really but like, let's talk about The Bachelor. Why do you think it loses steam? Like, I mean, I know we were talking about it during it. We were both like, oh, we wish we could stop watching now. Yeah, I think I think for me, the season was very long. Because mm. that 15 15- compared to the 13 episodes and I know that they said their strategy for the, the season was to have like more content to see more with him spend time with the mm. woman and for us to see the relationship develop but I feel like some of those things were just too long those last couple of dates yeah those, episodes, yeah, those were very long and yeah it dragged out for me the season mm. was very long for me the 15 episodes it was really too long for me the 13th episode is like a nice cutoff, you know? Yeah. Um, but those episodes that we were just like, ah, I want to stop watching now. Because it was one I watched like- on mute. And then, <laughs> and, I <went> to- <laughs> and then I went back and watched it again. Because I was like, I was always, I was like, no, man, there was just no substance. But I also wonder, like, we had the little bit of drama with the Jess Art thing. But if there just wasn't enough drama for the end. The last part, like to the end, Yeah. There wasn't a lot of drama, you're right. Like the Jess art drama. Yeah. And then she was gone and there was like, uh, okay. But the thing is like, I think the problem is that Mark wasn't charismatic out of his own. So the girls had to be extra charismatic. Mm. So, and you're then right. we were left with like, I mean, yes, Bridget caused a lot of drama, but by the end, I mean, she didn't have much less, much more to do. Mm-mm. And like, you know, Marissa was always like, oh, la, la. Yeah. So now I think that the problem probably did lie in, in casting him. And and that was why it just seemed to drag. Because if we had a, a guy who was charismatic, who you like, you genuinely believe that he was falling in love with all these girls, you'd like watch it and you'd want to know what's happening. Like you would yeah. be the, the hook of the season. And I think that the yeah. Bachelor or the Bachelorette, they should be the hook. Yeah, I oh, totally agree. You can't rely on carry the show. Yeah. Because yeah. if they knock out all the entertaining people in one episode, you still need enough of, of content to carry the show to the yeah. end. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because those those dates were really boring for me. But it's true what you say. He probably wasn't as charismatic towards the end as he appeared to be in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. It, it also felt like we we kind of knew his game also by then. Mm-hmm. That's why we would buy it towards the end. And they need to work with. I know that they like the bachelor picking his own dates, but they need to have somebody else helping him with that. No man. <laughs> Like, you can't have that same lying down date all the time. <laughs> they lying down. They lying down. I can't. <laughs> and then they probably tried to create an intimate atmosphere because, you know, there's 
there's always a lying down part in everyone's date, I guess. Like when you watch the international ones, like okay, I don't, I haven't watched that many because. I don't, the concept of the bachelor always like anno- I always get annoyed at some point at mm. these girls fighting over a guy. Yeah, but me too. I agree. Like, but their dates are amazing. Like I know that yeah. they probably don't have the same budget, but I mean they can they can do trade exchange. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> if you know you're gonna be on the bachelor, you will let them use your event space. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I also feel like the date should be a bit more more creative. But it was, I also think that that's just his type of person. Like, he's like the cookie cutter, Cape Townian, white guy that you see likes on Tinder. To, likes to hike on Saturdays. And, and craft beer and, I don't and, know. Yeah. Yeah, no. Well, hopefully this season's dates will be nice. The bachelorette's dates mm. will be fun. Yeah, and I think that, I don't know, I also think that women are more open. So even when it comes to, like, yeah. like racially diverse, like, I feel like, regardless of the race of the woman, I most women are, are open to date anybody because they, you know, so we will get to see different people from different backgrounds yeah. and which will be kind of exciting already. I am you know, excited. I'm, and all the guys in our house together, <laughs> you know it's going to be so much drama. I was already saying I can't wait to interview the guys. I hopefully Emnet <laughs> picks nice guys, some mm. potentials. <laughs> when they leave, when they leave. Exactly. But and have you found love interviews? since leaving the show? No. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Okay. Just keep your number. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I'm excited to see what they're going to do with it. I hope that they they actually a bit braver and think out of the box mm. with the scene. But I mean, like, I think yeah. they have like the support now. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, I did after season one already and we thought they would take more risks. But I mean, like people yeah. loved the, like the amount of exposure they got, the amount of people were like posting about it on all social media. Like they had so much. People were so into this. So I think that, yeah, that they have enough of a base that they can do whatever they want now and people will like yeah. buy into it. So they don't have to I fight, totally fight agree, for yeah. followers or viewers or whatever. Mm. But yeah, now it's clever of them. The bachelor, it's going to be amazing. I'm excited. I'm really excited to see all the drama that's going to come from it. And I like it when they do like callbacks. So like they bring someone from a previous season back, like, you know, in the, yeah. in the bachelor and they'll bring like the girl that, that rejected the guy in the bachelor, you yeah. know, when the guy becomes a bachelor afterwards. Like yes. This, yes. <laughs> bring Mark back. This is like inside baseball, whatever. but do you remember in the press conference when he said his biggest regret was letting Conniso go? Yes. So, yeah, bring that up again. I want to see how that yeah. goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember now he said that. My theory about that was that I thought that he honestly didn't think he was good enough for her and he couldn't believe that she'd be interested in him. That's why he was like always like, I don't know if she's being real. I don't know if she's being real. Mm. But I mean, he's right. I don't think, I don't think <laughs> that he was <laughs> interesting enough for her. <laughs> no. <laughs> Her and Molessa, I was like, oh. no, guys, you need to go. I was like, you deserve better. No, girls, come out. Way better. Yeah, way, way better. Can you imagine them living their lives, doing their Black Lives Matter stuff, and you just like a chilling in the back it out? was never going to work. <laughs> <laughs> was never going to work. No, they need, they, need pe- they need a guy that's more like upit, as we say. Yeah, he would have just been chilling. Hashtag hiking life. Hashtag <laughs> dog, dog. What's the dog's name? Luna. <laughs> yeah, Luna. Oh, oh I remember Jess R when she was like, if it's a date with Luna, please don't take Oh, my word. Oh, Jess R. I was actually very disappointed that Jess R didn't come to the reunion. Like, I feel after all that, she should have been at the reunion. But also, did she not have, like, a contract? Is she not supposed to? I don't understand how she could, like, cop out. I mean, she didn't even do interviews. You know that. Yeah, just a statement. That email that we got. <laughs> I know, she probably just didn't want to be... Maybe she was embarrassed about it all. Mm. I don't know. Um, so I wanted to say, um, we used to tease you so much about, like, all the celebrities that you don't like. Yeah. So who's, like, your whitelist? So your, like, your celebrities that, you know, these are my faves. They can do no wrong in my eyes. Oh, so I don't want to bring up the day. Yes, okay. It's a day, obviously. Ava DuVernay, obviously. Ayola Davis can do no wrong in my eyes. John Legend, 
can also do no wrong. Idris Albuk as well. I know he did a lot of whack things now, but still, man, Idris and The Rock. He, I remember those are John, my, John and Chrissy is your like couple, or like your couple, your celeb couple. Yeah, they are. Yeah. But actually, I like uh, Gabrielle Union and um, Dwayne Wade now, too. Mm. They also I know they're now. So those are my can do no wrong in my eyes, people. Everyone else, I don't, I don't care for. Um, so what were your favorite shows growing up? Sure, growing up. Dawson's Creek was actually one of my favorites mm-hmm. growing up, especially Pacey. Yeah, Pacey was like, I would say Pacey was my first like big TV crush. Oh, he was perfect. Which is so cool. Mm-hmm. And then My So Called Life. This is how old I am. So with Claire Danes. I love it. It was like daily one of them. Yeah. And he was in there too. And Felicity. Because her hair, her hair was everything. Mm-hmm. And when she cut her hair. And, uh, yeah. And then I think that sitcoms was really, really like a big part of doing up for me. So Brandy. I love the Brandy mm. show. Moesha. Moesha show. Yeah. And then, um, sure, I'm old. When I think about the shows, Sister, Sister. Mm. Like, the sister and then <laughs> family matters because Steve Urkel yeah. those are my shows growing up that I used to enjoy a lot mm. yeah I think we like I mean you're just like maybe a little bit older than me but yeah I used to watch the same stuff and hanging with Mr. Cooper and yes you could always come on like after each other yeah yes I forgot about hanging with Mr. Cooper I think that's probably my first big crash is probably I'm a crash but um Ship was probably like sister, sister's parents, Jackie. And yes. And the father. Like, I waited for them to, to get to get. <laughs> they were so different, but somehow you could just see yeah. them. They're going to work. They're going to so work. so much. I also <gasps> love her. I wish she was the best. Yeah. What is it? Lisa. Lisa. Yes. Lisa was yeah. her mother's name. Lisa was her name. Yeah, they were cool. They were different, but. <laughs> So what is a show that you used to love, but then you had to give up watching because like you just couldn't anymore? A show that, you know, you watch like the first few seasons of... Vampire Diaries. Oh yeah, same. I get you. I couldn't with Elena. Elena just started working on my nerves. I think it's a problem with like a lot of, a lot of those shows, like the main character. Yeah. You watch Sabrina. Yeah. The new one. Uh. Yeah, the first two seasons, but... The third, like part three, I, I couldn't. I don't even watch part three yet. But also really? the main girl, I'm like, shush, man. Yeah, she was also getting, she just, it was just about her. And she fangs in a lot of cuck, man. Every time I'm just like, oh, why? Why? I was like, like, I was just like part two. I was like, no, no, no. I think I watched the first three episodes of part three. And then I was just like, I can't with this girl anymore. I had the same problem with Vampire Diaries. I think I got yeah. way further. Like, it was bad at when I was watching it. But, uni, I couldn't. Especially when, like, the other people started dying. When that one guy died, I was like, I had enough. I had enough now. It was Elena. I, Klaus came in, and that mm. was a bit... It Elena, man. Uh, I think, I mean, it's a problem a lot of those shows have, is that it, like, it centers around a character... Too much. Like, I know yes. that, that, I mean, obviously most shows are like that. But you need to realize when the character is not working and you you have to develop exactly. around it. It's like with Dawson's exactly. Creek. Like, if Dawson's Creek was just about Dawson, how annoying of a show yeah. would that have been? He was so boring. Oh, Dawson was boring. He was the most boring part of that show. I was like, why is this guy the main guy? But, I mean, the other people around him was yeah. like, and then they just yeah. like develop the other characters. And, yeah. Yeah. What does Kismas, uh, Jack and Andy? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they all came in. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Andy was a lot. <laughs> Andy was crazy. Shame. She was. Is wrong? Is she like alcoholic or something? What is wrong? With yeah. You? But that actress, whenever I see her in something, I always know that she's going to fang on something. Like, there's always. Yeah. Yeah. And she like pops up and I'm like, mm. Tom is about to go down. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you what do you what do you think is gonna happen with movies this year? Because I mean movies can't come out. So do you think it's gonna go to streaming? Have you seen like this tenet tenet? That Christopher Nolan drama. Like he keeps on saying it's being pushed back yeah. again, yeah. Back again. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen though. I really don't know. Mm. 
I'm sad for Mulan because I was really looking forward to watching Mulan. Yeah. Um, I really don't know what's going to happen. Because, I mean, I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm not going to feel safe going to the cinema mm. right now. I'm not going to the cinema. I don't know if they're going to release some of the smaller movies and then do the big ones. I really don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I feel like they're going to have to cut their losses, especially with the movies that are already done. Like Mulan exactly. and James Bond and Black Widow. Like the movies that we know are done, that they're just waiting because they want a bigger opening. They're going to have to cut their losses and just... I agree. Yeah. yeah, but then what are we going to get? What are they going to do here? Unless they like... like the- Send it to box office. Get... <laughs> <laughs> gonna, box office is going to get all the shits. <laughs> what a year. Yeah, I'm, I agree with you. They should just cut their losses, but I don't see it recovering this year still. Yeah. I don't. But I see that they move like the Oscars date back. I mean, like the like the qualifying date. But I still feel yeah. like then all the movies are going to come out just before, you know, at ease. Like all the movies always come yeah. out like just before the Oscars. So now we're going to just have like a million movies come out in like February. when That we also won't be able to see. Yeah, because they will come out here in like August. Yeah, after Oscars. We'll be like, oh. We know it really didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just chaos. I think by the time this comes out or just maybe the week after or something, the Emmy nominations would have come out. So, like, who do you hope gets nominated this year? Oh, that's a question. Um, question, Karen. <laughs> now I have to think. Okay, what, what have you enjoyed, like, this year? Because, I mean, last year, like, Fleabag one and Equity Vat. Um, sure. I'm, like, so removed, like, from American shows that yeah, I okay. to... Oh, okay, do I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, oh, can we nominate K-dramas, please? What did I watch this year that was really good? Okay, I think Kelly Washington and Reese Witherspoon. Oh, Little Fires Everywhere. Yes, they will do. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, I want to say Viola Davis because there was some that were really, really good for How to Get Away with Murder. I didn't watch the second half yet of the season. There was some really, really good, like the last episode, her acting was really good. There was a scene in there where she did a monologue, which was amazing. So I'd like her. <laughs> yeah, she she is. And then I really think that Queen Queen Sugar deserves a nom this year. Oh, okay. Because the there was some really good writing there, and just the character development with a lot of those characters. So they've not they haven't had a nomination yet. So I'd like for them to have a nomination. Mm. And then we probably know this is us is going to get a nomination again, which. I like this last season was but same same we can't I, I, don't know think I, I, I think also I haven't watched the second half of the season I can't even remember what happened but I just you know who deserves who I think Uncle Nicky though <laughs> the actor who plays yes. the old Uncle Nicky <laughs> yes I cannot yes. the way yes. I, when he was in that Thanksgiving episode when he was crying in the car oh. I was sobbing oh yes <laughs> I, I was yeah. sobbing I think Manny did her best work this season mm. Oh, yes, yeah. You were I think there was more weight to her character this season, which I enjoyed. Uh, and it's not by the time she also gets some, like, her, fl- like yeah. her flowers. Uh, I mean, we just, like, uh, uh-huh. Randall and Jack get all the <laughs> shame. Yeah, yeah. But Mandy's, Mandy, Mandy was all this season. I haven't hated on work on my nose this season. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Ooh, I'm trying to think who else was nominated. Like who's like being in the in the talks? You watch a good fight. Yeah, I haven't watched the new season yet. But like the fact that they are not walking away with awards is just yeah. crazy for me. The show is yeah. so wild, so good, so so good. But like now, um, Tauroy is leaving. Tauroy Linda Lindo. Is he? So yeah, is he also he, leaving? Him and yeah, and Kush. I don't know, he's also leaving. Yeah, which is kind of sad. But now the season was cut short because of, of COVID. COVID. So, like, you didn't even get, like, a farewell or anything. <gasps> and neither did she. So I hope that they, like, bring them back for, like, a bit of a farewell. No, I have to watch. That's been on my list to watch. Yeah, so I'm I don't thinking know. Else. What you were saying now about Queen Sugar, I'm like, 
maybe I know that it hasn't really affected with quarantine, but maybe it, it, some of the big shows will give some of the little shows a chance to yeah to get acknowledged. Because I mean, now at least like yeah. Game of Thrones, Cla, Veep is done, Modern Family is done, so mm. Big Bang is done. Yeah. So you know, it's like more of the shows that we don't see get a chance to and Big Little yeah, Lies. The- <sighs> Enjoy the second season as much as I enjoy. But you know they'll get nominations anyway. Mm -mm. I'd like for Zoe to get get a nomination. Mm. You're like, oh, you're saying Zoe was your only reason Mm -hmm. for watching. I also expected more though. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know. Me too. And like, I wanted more of a more of a story. Uh, Yeah, me too. Because they touched on it, especially the stuff with her mom. Mm. It just like given us a bit more. Yeah, but I didn't enjoy the the second season as much as I enjoyed the first one. Mm. But I feel like they will still give like Lord of Dern and Metal and they will still get the Beast. The Beast, yeah. Mm. <sighs> white women, white womening. But then you yeah. see the Ideas would probably get for Little Fires. Yeah, she was amazing in there. Oh, she was so brilliant. She was really good in there. <laughs> yeah, she was good. And your boyfriend, Pacey. Yeah, my boyfriend plays him. I love that Jody Turner stands him on Twitter. I oh, love Jody. Her, Jody. Yes, I love her. <laughs> what was the last tweet? Um, a lot of you have called him daddy. Well, I made him a daddy. <laughs> <He's> Brilliant. <laughs> I would do the same. If if I ended up marrying someone who so many people had a crush on, I would do yes. the damn same. <laughs> I would post about it all the time. All the time. <laughs> See how she was searching for that tighty whitey gift. She's like, I know you can have it. Please send it to me. I was like, Yeah, I know. That's exactly really how cool. you should act. Not be like, he's a father of three. He's not a type. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that was Leandra Engelbrecht. You can find her at, at Leandra M underscore Engel on both Twitter and Instagram and she can tell you more about South African shows and movies and that sort of things that her her vibe yet again me saying vibe I don't know why I keep saying this but anyway now we're going to give you a little bit of a throwback to last week's episode and get more into the whole bachelorette vibes and let's just hear a bit more about why Clonisa Van Damme is the best bachelorette they could have chosen and why you should enter to be one of her bachelors i'm so excited to share my journey of finding love with everybody south africa mzanzi we got a bachelorette <laughs> and her name is a difficult one but an easy one so let's have this <laughs> <laughs> so for the guys that are wanting to enter what would you say your what kind of guy are you looking for so my ideal man would definitely be someone who is independent to the really achieve his goals in his life. I mean, I've already achieved a lot of my goals. I have two degrees. I'm working on my third one. You know, I'm, my career is where I want it to be. So I need a man who is together, girl. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. You can find all the information about this week's episode in the show notes on our website. You can find me at at Karen Walby on Instagram and at Karen Walby's on Twitter. I also started a newsletter at wildestdreams.substack.com. You can find more information on my socials, but basically it's where I'm writing every Wednesday. I'll write a letter about what I'm thinking, what I've been enjoying. And I noticed that I don't really spend a lot of time on the episodes talking about what I'm recommending. So you'll find all that kind of information there. So please subscribe. Um, It's nothing formal, nothing dramatic. It's just me being honest and real about what I'm loving and what I'm not loving. And just, you know, a little later once a week. Okay, so you can find the podcast at Crashing on Pod on Twitter and Instagram. We do fun things there. So follow us and engage with us and, you know, catch on any shenanigans with us. You can also find us at CrashingOnPodcast.com. You can send any feedback to crushingonpod at gmail.com. Don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcast. And all episodes are edited and produced by Rebecca Barches. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Bye.